In this video, I want to go through a CFA level one exam style question on the topic of investment property. This is going to be a theoretical question, although you, met, you may get a numerical question in the exam on this topic. It's going to be relatively easy, but you must know some rules, especially as this is treated completely differently under IFRS and uh, US GAAP. So if this is something you want to get right in the exam, Please keep watching and let's get solving. Okay, this is the question which I want you to have a go at. Which of the following statements is least likely correct with regard to investment property? And do note, least likely correct. So we're effectively looking for the wrong answer in this one. With regard to investment property. A. Companies reporting under IFRS are allowed to value investment property using either the cost model or revaluation model. B. If a company chooses to measure investment property using the fair value model, any changes in value recorded upon the transfer from owner-occupied property to investment property is treated as a revaluation. Or C. Investment property is not defined under US GAAP. So these are the options. I'm going to make them go away um, for a moment just to have a, a blank canvas uh, in front of me. Let me first introduce a little bit of theory. First of all, investment uh, property is a purely IFRS concept in the sense that it does not uh, appear or is not defined under US GAAP. So let me write IFRS CS, but not defined under US GAAP, and that's going to, um, I guess, uh, help us with the solving of this question because answer C says investment property is not defined under US GAAP. That's absolutely the case. So at least we know C is um, correct in terms of being um, a statement over here. However, uh, that doesn't, doesn't really get us any closer to solving the question yet because we're looking for the answer which is incorrect, the one which is least likely correct. Okay, let me um, at least for a moment make this uh, go away. I know that C is ticked in a way over here. Right, so IFRS defines investment property, US GAAP doesn't. So all the rules I'm going to tell you um, right now pertain to the treatment under um, IFRS. So what's this going to be? This is... Um, under IFRS, land and buildings. So obviously, we're exhausting the definition of what property may be. It's either land or buildings, but which are held for very specific purposes. So they're going to be held either to earn rental income, so generate some kind of income from the fact that this property is rented out, or perhaps, but you know, it's going to be an or or and because the two are not going to be mutually um, exclusive and rental income or and for capital appreciation, i.e. Um, for the purposes of seeing the value of that land or buildings uh, go up in value. So you may be, for example, in a building uh, or you may own a building, you may be renting it out to others but at the same time, hoping that its value will go up. So a combination of those two benefits or those, those two motivations happening at the same time. Now, what's very important is that investment property cannot be owner-occupied in the sense that it's either standing vacant, there's nothing happening in it, or it's rented out to others but you and your employees, the employees of the company that owns this investment property, shouldn't be using it or shouldn't be occupying it for their um, normal day-to-day -day business. Okay, once you've got investment property, there are some rules concerning its measurement. And once again, please note that this is under IFRS, seeing as under US GAAP, this category simply doesn't exist. And uh, buildings and land, which fall under this definition that they're held to earn rentals or for capital, you know, they're held for capital appreciation purposes, they would simply be classified as as normal property planted equipment, normal non-current long-lived um, uh, tangible assets. However, under IFRS, we've got a choice of how we approach the measurement of these. So the choice is going to be between two alternative models. One is the classic so-called cost model, 
And when you follow this cost model, you're doing something very, very basic and very um, normal from a financial statements point of view. You're going to introduce your item of land or building into the balance sheet, into assets at the original cost of purchase or the cost of construction in the case of a building. And subsequently, you will apply uh, depreciation to it or in the case of land, most likely not, seeing as in... Uh, so in the vast majority of cases, land doesn't get depreciated. Okay. The alternative is going to be something known as the fair value model. Let me once again stress that we're talking about something which only happens under IFRS. So this choice doesn't apply to uh, companies reporting under US GAAP. Now, under the fair value model, the carrying amount, so the amount you display in the balance sheet in relation to an item of investment property is simply going to equal its current fair value, which you'll typically get from a um, from a valuation exercise performed by um, a chartered surveyor, somebody who knows how to properly value land or buildings property using one of the suitable methods. Okay. The critical thing to note here is that if you have elected to follow the fair value model, the building or the land potentially, but in either case, the item of property doesn't get depreciated. So there is no depreciation. This is something which the examiner may want to ask you about and see if you know this little, uh, tiny, but important detail. And one more thing. From between the visits of the chartered surveyor, so, you know, between one occasion when they visit the company and the next, there's going to be changes, right? So basically, this fair value will need to be updated and it will either be going up or down, depending on what's happening to the value of the property. You will therefore have to update the carrying amount of the asset in line with what the uh, surveyor, the expert is telling you. And what happens to the other side of the balance sheet, so to speak? Well, in the case of investment property, all of these changes between one period and the next. So all changes in fair value, up or down value, they go to the current income statement. So they go to PNL in the period in which those changes are made impacting your income statement positively or negatively, depending on direction. There is one exception to this rule, which unfortunately you must know it's in your curriculum. And that's when an item initially enters investment property. So what sometimes happens, or actually happens quite a lot, is that a piece of um, property, land or building, could be initially sitting within property, plant and equipment. Why? Because the company is occupying, for example, a building. Um, its staff are sitting in that building doing something, performing administrative work, production work, maybe sales, whatever. However, at some point, the staff of the company move out, the building becomes vacant and potentially gets rented out or maybe is just standing vacant. In that case, this item of property will move from PPE, property, plant and equipment, which is, you know, non-current assets of a tangible nature, which we are using ourselves, into the category investment property. So it's quite often that we see such moves happening. Potentially, there are other moves as well. Um, sometimes property plant and uh, uh, sorry, sometimes property may be sitting within um, within um, inventories. If you're in the business of, for example, constructing buildings and selling them, then those will be sitting within your in inventories. But the most classic move is between property plant and equipment. If I was using something for myself or for my own purposes, into investment property, if that building became vacant, I moved out, or perhaps. I've moved out and rented it out to others. So there may be a transfer. And what often happens is, upon this transfer into investment property, if the company is applying the fair value model, 
to value investment property. But before, on the property plant and equipment, it's applying the classic cost minus depreciation model. There may be potentially a, a very big update to the carrying amount. Because for the first time, somebody's going to look at the fair value of this asset and it's going to have an impact on our balance sheet. So there's a special rule to what happens upon this transfer. When transferring from PPE to investment property, the change in carrying amount. So that initial update to fair value doesn't impact PNL because that could potentially cause huge, typically upwards moves to PNL. The change in carrying amount is treated like a revaluation. Now, a revaluation is a concept which we apply to property, plant and equipment. Property, plant and equipment may be revalued to their current uh, fair value, but any changes associated with a revaluation change don't go to PNL, they go to equity bypassing the PNL but they go through something called other comprehensive income. If you're not sure about this concept of other comprehensive income and what happens upon a revaluation, please be sure to watch the videos on the revaluation models model. And on this channel, we've got two videos of devoted to what happens in a revaluation of property, plant and equipment, how equity gets impacted via OCI. But definitely there is no impact here on P and L. Once the item of property has already been moved to investment property, any subsequent updates to fair value will impact, sorry, the PNL, but not the initial big update when for the first time something enters the category investment property if it was transferred from a different category where we were keeping it at cost. So that's a detail but it may be significant from the point of view of getting the marks on the exam. So what I propose we do now is have a look back at the question and see which answer is the correct one. Okay. Here were the uh, ABC answers. We know we're looking for the one which is incorrect. We know C is actually correct. Investment property is not defined under use gap. That's true. Now, if I, let, let me look at B. I'm going from bottom up. If a company chooses to measure investment property using the fair value model, any change in value recorded upon the transfer from owner-occupied property to investment property is treated as a revaluation. That's actually um, absolutely true as well, this one. And it's what I wrote here. If something was owner-occupied, so if a building, for example, was owner-occupied, it would have fallen under the category property, plant and equipment. And then upon the move to investment property, this would be handled as a revaluation. It wouldn't impact P&L. It would impact equity directly, uh, bypassing the P&L, but going through other comprehensive income. And remember, there are videos on this on the channel as well. Now... It must therefore be answer A. Companies reporting under IFRS are allowed to value investment property either using the cost model or revaluation model. No, it's not the revaluation model. It's the fair value model, and it's different. The fair value model is specific to investment property. The revaluation model, which uh, answer A mentions, is something you can apply to um, property, plant, and equipment but its handling of changes from period to period is very different than the fair, fair value model. Under revaluation, we take changes to equity via OCI, other comprehensive income. Under the fair value model, we take all changes in fair value to profit and loss. So let me just note that this is the incorrect answer, but that makes it obviously the answer to this question. So it's going to be the least likely correct. Yeah, it should be answer A.